good morning. Um, when I was passing by Nina on the way down, Pat was driving the car said, that's where I come from. And I said to him, well, you're not the only famous man who came from Nina then. <laughs> Uh, and obviously coming to some place like UL on an occasion like this, it's only right and proper that I should reflect somewhat on the, uh, the life and times of J.D. Barnell. I didn't, I'm not sure that I could advise everybody else to do as he did with the, uh, with the invitation from his mother when he was age seven um, to get zinc and hydrochloric acid following his analysis of the Faraday lectures uh, to see how, um, how gas might be uh, created. And um, he was disappointed with the experiment. But before he went to bed, he went back to check, and because it was dark, he lit a match. <laughs> and he wasn't disappointed after that. <laughs> I think this uh, project here lights a match. And that's why I wanted to come down as the holder of the office that I hold, because I think this is an exceptional day, as President Barry pointed out, not just for, um, for UL or for the Midwest, but for our country, and the implications are global. And that's keeping entirely with the spirit of UL uh, to pioneer and to connect and to build a university that is locally and globally connected, and that's what you're doing. Where is Mike Z? Where, where are you, Mike? You're there or something? Where? You I heard you on the radio this morning. And like no more than the politicians speaking about the budget, you lost me within two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's a, it's a really exciting project, and that's part of what we want to do here. And I want to say to you, uh, Don, that um, the fact that this is a collaborative effort between so many uh, agencies and people and and um, um, associates means that it's it's got the energy and therefore the resolve to go into areas that are as yet undetermined and make that connection between business, the commercial world, and the real world of people. And I know I'm faced here with the, some of the best academics and intellectual powerhouses that we have on the planet. Uh, you still haven't developed the cure for the common cold, and I'd be uh, happy if you, uh, if you uh, turned your thoughts to that. <laughs> now, this is a 52 million euro initiative. And I can tell you, tell the Atlantic Philanthropies, if I had known uh, that you were going to give 26 million to this project here, I'd have been very happy. I'd have been equally as happy in the discussions that were run into the budget if we had known this kind of money was lying around for our investment. <laughs> <laughs> well done, and I was happy to be associated with the uh, All Ireland, All Ireland um, uh, response and honour of Chuck Feeney in Dublin Castle uh, just last year, which was, I think, the first time that all of the uh, all of the universities uh, came together to honour somebody who has made an extraordinary impact uh, around the world, and obviously the Bernal, uh, the Bernal project will will I've no doubt go the same way. Uh, I'm not sure are these all members of the family here, but uh, the Bernal family, you'd be very proud. It's a, I think it's a wonderful honour for your family, uh, for the heritage uh, of JD, uh, and Brooke Watson will forever be enshrined, I'm sure, in the names of generations to come, who out of these, these uh, research projects will find new ways of doing things and different ways of doing things that are going to impact on the lives of millions of people in a world which is changing at bewildering speed. So to those academics and their researchers and their innovators who are going to come here um, to UL and be part and a consequence of the Bernal project, I wish them the very best. So I know from speaking to Mary that pharmaceutical science and engineering and energy and sustainable environment and modern and biomedical materials um, and engineering are part of the elements of what you're doing here. Uh, we have this national priority, prioritization research. Great title, isn't it? National Re Research Prioritization Exercise. But actually it means that as a small country, 
we don't have the resources to invest in everything. And so what we did was decide where are the areas that you might most usefully invest in and follow through on those. There were um, 14 of these identified and they go from data analytics to big data to energy uh, to national health innovation hubs and so on. I think that's important. And for me, uh, as the holder of this office, I think it's, it really is all about opening the doors of opportunity for our country. Uh, just as, uh, as J.D. Barnell was known as the sage all his life, because he knew everything, or so the undergraduates felt, when I was down in uh, EMC there in Cork uh, last year, the managing director in front of two and a half thousand engineers said, uh, is the person here who's going to create the next Facebook? So a hundred hands went up, and uh, that's what you want out of the Bernal project. Somebody is on the way here. Somebody may already be here who is going to achieve the same sort of excellence and innovation uh, and uh, set down the template just as J.D. Bernal did. Don't know who that person is yet or who they might be, but I've no doubt but that the project will lead on to that. And that's the excitement and the adventure of research. That's why uh, government put in place an action plan for jobs to open these doors. And I've made no secret of the fact that this is probably the most open administration uh, for business and opportunity and initiative and entrepreneurship, certainly of the last 50 years, because it's in there the future, the future of our country lies, and that's going to be generated uh, by young people uh, who will avail of all this sort of energy and interaction uh, to, to plot new ways and new pathways that have only been dreamt of as yet. Uh, and that's, I think, the essence of what you're doing here, the interaction between business and industry and research and the world of academia. That's what's going to make Ireland continue to be famous and right up on the global, uh, on the global field. So in that sense, you know, R&D has been so important to us and is reflected again in the most recent, um, in the most recent budget. This is always a, a difficulty. Um, I have to say that, you know, being involved at the European Council level, at leader level, it's always, um, it's always a pressure point to say your country's in a bailout program, therefore you you are not sovereign and independent in terms of your economic processes and thought. In other words, paymaster general is in the corner. Uh, and I hope that we can exit this program uh, in December this year. Um, and while we might still be in our bare feet, as it were, we know where the, uh, where the high ground and where the objective is. I think that's a big thing for Irish people, uh, that their sacrifices and the challenges that they've put up with uh, are part of a process of leading to that recovery of economic sovereignty and independence and then make up our minds where it is we want to be in the next number of years and how we build that. And that's why it's been important that people can now begin to see rising sense of confidence in various areas in, in the sectors around the country um, and that the fixing of our public finances has been crucial to that. The, um, the capacity to put a halt to uh, the process of having lost 250,000 jobs in three years in a country of this size and put a halt to that and move on to be creating 3,000 jobs a month which we want to build on for the future. And that impacts on so many areas around the country. This city, this region is fighting back in a very strong way. Um, your city is recovering. The purchase of the opera, the centre in the centre city site will lead to a whole new development of a, of a wonderful city centre. The independence given to uh, Shannon Airport, the future developments that can take place around fines, the clusters of industry here and more to come are rising the spirit of Limerick. Just as they won the Munster Championship, maybe they might go on and you know, achieve higher honours, the same as we've been trying to do for 62 years <laughs> of our country. But I, I'm really glad to note the resurgence of spirit and enterprise and innovation uh, in the Midwest. And that's all part of what you're doing here. UL is a young university. It's getting a great reputation. And that reputation enhances our country. And in, in, internationally, 
Now, reputation is so important for our credibility and for our integrity. And the fact that you bring world-famous professors and academics and researchers here to UL uh, speaks to that. Because from, from my engagement with chief executives of major companies around the world, when, when they say, how, how can the Irish do this? Isn't it something innately in us all uh, that as an island nation, when we're challenged, we rise to that challenge irrespective of how, that, how high that bar might be? And just